Hey guys, this is Jim with Chicagoland Geeks, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a storage solution for your 3D printer filament. If you're into 3D printing, you might be aware that humidity can play a huge role in the quality of your prints, specifically if you're using PLA plastic. Just because it absorbs so much moisture from the air, it can cause all kinds of trouble. You can get bubbles in your print, humidity gets into your extruder, you could have the filament change diameter size in you. All those things are bad. All those things make terrible quality prints. I found a great solution to store the filament, and it's very simple. It basically uses a one and a quarter inch pipe, a couple little pieces that you can find on Thingiverse, which I'll link in the description, and some spacers and some adapters to help get your filament spools down to the right size so they fit on this nicely. First things first though, you're going to have to go to Thingiverse, visit the link in the description, you're going to have to download the jig template for the mounting system. And basically all this is, is you take the jig, put it on the bottom of the box, and it you know, gives you a universal hole spacing to make this a little cleaner and a little easier to do. And as far as tools you'll need for this, you will need a drill, a couple drill bits, tape measure, a marker, of course a one and a quarter inch pipe. You can use PVC, I use some black, I don't even know what it is, I just bought it because it was black. It's still it's pretty sturdy. You're going to need some tubing to fit your filament through. Um, I forgot the exact size of this, I can look, I'll link it in the description. Um, I got a quick connect for the tubing, just goes in there. And then we also have these little brackets here, which are a different thing to file. And basically these just you know, go on each side of the Tupperware bin there and you know, gives you a nice little area to feed the filament through, put your adapter in, put your tubing into that and you can run it straight to your feeder. You're going to need some, I think I have number 8 and number 10 machine screws. Some washers and some matching nuts. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is clean your bin. Um, they must come with a little, you know, manufacturing dust or something on the inside because it was all hazy when I first got it. So just use some Windex and paper towel, wipe down the inside of that really good. Um, then after that, you're going to want to grab your mounting jig and mark some mark some spots where we're going to create the holes. Now you can measure this out if you want to. You basically just stand it up from the bottom. Using the bins I'm using, it's really easy to center it. You know, it's just it's just very easy just to proportion out looking at it. I've had great success doing that so far, so I'm just gonna go ahead and freehand it. Just get it about where you want it, put a little upwards pressure on it, and then mark a spot for each hole. Okay, after you get your holes marked, you're gonna have to drill out the three spots on each side. And you're going to want to go with a drill bit that's going to match the hardware you're using. Now based on you know, what you have around or what you want to buy, I would just kind of eyeball what you need. I believe this is a number 8 machine screw. And I forget what drill bit that is, but they're pretty much about the same diameter. And it's okay if the drill bit's a little smaller or a little larger, because you're going to be using a washer. And this is going to cover it up no matter what. It's still going to keep it airtight. So. Go ahead and drill your holes. This stuff is really easy to drill through. So be careful, it can get really squirrely on you. I've had it happen just right up the side. Not cool. But no big deal nonetheless. Let's just test that, make sure the screws gonna go in there. Right in. That's what she said. Alright. Same for the other side. On the inside, you might get some of these little burrs happening from drilling. Just go ahead and knock those off. You're going to want your pieces to lay nice and flat against the side wall of this box. If you don't, it's kind of ruining the whole point. You want to have a nice tight seal to. Uh, avoid getting any moisture in there. So since we're nice and drilled up, we'll go ahead and start mounting this in there. I'm probably going to speed up the video for you a little bit so you don't have to actually sit here and watch me fumble with this. But basically you're going to want to take your machine screw, washer, and put that on the outside of the piece. Now this piece has little divots 
basically for the, the nut to sit into real nicely and self-locking. So once you get to the point of the nut being against the plastic, it's just going to take over and you're not really going to have to hold anything with your hands. You probably want to do first, just get one nut on just to hold this thing so you don't curse it out later as it falls while you're trying to use it. You know what, I'm going to do this for this. And I'm using the wrong size nut. I don't wonder why it's not fitting. Uh, go figure. It's a little late right now, so a little bit out of it, but I've been putting off this video and basically I just need another storage bin. I'm running out of room, so let's go ahead and get this screwed on. Now I find it's easiest if you just hook onto the nut and use a drill. Now I find this easiest if you just use a drill while kind of holding the nut to the back side there. It's not exactly easy, but there we go. Once you get the first one in, that is so much easier. Alright, we have one. speed up the video. You just kind of watch me fumble around with this for a little bit. That's what your first side will look like. I don't know if you can see that in there, but it just kind of has a little lip on the inside. Looks nice and clean. All right, we have the first step of our solution finished. Putting the side brackets on. They're going to look like that. The next step is to put this little bad boy on. This is the uh, angled feeder adapter that goes on the side of the ball. Now, from what I found, if you're going to use the same bin I'm using, the best spot to put this seems to be right along this little seam that's running all the way around the bin. Basically what I do is just kind of eyeball that out, putting the bottom of this piece on top of that seam, kind of getting it in the center. This doesn't really have to be perfect. You know, it just has to generally be centered and right about that height. Where the filament's going to sit, it's going to be able to feed easily from the bottom. Right there. Let's just make a couple marks here. Okay, so that's that. So with these little adapters though, they have a bigger screw hole. So I went ahead and I think I believe they used a number 10 machine screw and a little bit larger drill bit. And with this one, it's really simple. Just two holes. Once again, they don't have to be perfect. One. Two. Okay, now to mount this, you're going to need two screws and two nuts. And what you're going to want to do is find the piece that has, it's kind of like, uh, like a funnel shape on the nozzle. I don't know if you can see that there. It's kind of a funnel divot and the other one's more of a threaded side. You're going to want to take the threaded side and put it on the outside of the bin facing upwards. And you're going to want to take the funnel side and put it on the inside of the bin facing down. So the best way to do that is to grab a screw and get it through the first part. Just enough so you can put it onto the side. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead. It's really tight so I'm going to two screws in first. The machine screw is so tight, you might have to drill it through. Well, depending on what you use. What I'm using, unfortunately, that's the case. So, we're going to want to go ahead and stick that through our holes. 
And then if you're lucky, you'll be able just to screw it before you have to put the nut on. And it'll kind of hold it in place for you. Which that did beautifully right there. And then attach your nuts to the back. One. That's going to look like that. I don't know if you can see it that way. Nice angled feeder. And then you have our brackets on the side. Alright, so I got our pipe cut. Everything's ready to go. If you want to go ahead and test it out and do that, just take the pipe and move it between the two brackets. And if you cut it to the right side, you should have no bowing on the sides. A nice tight fit in there. See how ingenious that is? Now we have a nice pole right through the center of the box that we're going to put our filament on. So at this point, we're pretty much ready with the box. There's a few other minor things you can do, which is uh, you can use a quick connect adapter if you'd like. You don't have to use a hose. But what I do is I use a quick connect adapter and go ahead and mount that to the outside angle feeder bracket. You know, this is supposed to be threaded with, there, right there, there it goes. Thread's actually, like, grab that one. Which is amazing. 3D printers are amazing. I cannot believe that you can print threaded objects and everything just works. So you have your quick connect adapter, your tubing. And I use a short piece of tube. As you, you can probably see it behind me, I have one in action right now. And my tube, I have go mostly to the feeder part. And just you maybe get an inch or two of actual filament exposed to air before it gets put into the system. So you go ahead, put in your quick connect, put in your tubing, and once you do that, it's pretty solid. And that's basically our bin. The next thing you're gonna have to do, depending on what type of filament you have, most types of filament will require these little adapters here to reduce them to a one and a quarter inch pipe. And some other types of filament, like, yeah, I have some here, it's not open, but these are just straight one and a quarter inch holes, so you don't need any adapters. But these will also be in the description. They're just called, I have school adapters, I forgot. Um, but basically you print one for each side. I really don't know the purpose of doing one for each side. You know, as far as, there's a left and a right version of the file. I don't really think it makes a difference. I'm just going to assume it makes some kind of difference. So basically that's what it does. It takes your whatever spacing that is on your filament spool and reduces it to one and a quarter. And it actually works pretty nice. And on top of that, you have your spacers, which are included down below. And you're going to want to put one of those between each roll of filament just to kind of keep things nice and separate so you're not dragging all the spools with you as you do things. So now that we have that ready, I think I'm going to go ahead and put my bin together. So we have those. You're going to want to save these, by the way. If you have any laying around so the Celesia gel packets, you keep those in the bin. And basically, not only is the bin enclosed, but you have the Celesia gel in there. And it's, you know, help you suck whatever moisture it can out of your box's little atmosphere. So each of these are new, so I'm opening them up for an example so you can use gel packets and action. And then I think I'm going to stick this roll in there too. So we have one, two, three, four. And I find the easiest way to do this is just to go ahead and stand it up by itself. Put your spools on. And you're going to make sure that they're, all your filament spools are going to be fed the same way. You want them to go under your spool and out the angle feeder. So they're all going to have to point from the bottom out. So we want that. Throw a space around there. This one doesn't need an adapter, but that's out. That's silver, gold, spacer. That's out. Silver. Spacer. That was out too.
don't think that's all we're going to be able to fit on this one. Um, we can go ahead and we can it. I like to put a spacer or two on each side. If you have some extra room, I'll print a few extra spacers. So they'll come in handy. You never know. I mean, some. I mean, all the filament spool sizes are different. This one's going to, you know, a little empty to my liking, but it's going to do its job. So now that we have our little spool ready, it's as easy as this. You just take it all at once, line it up with your two adapters, kind of push the wall out a little bit. So you can see that pipe down in there. And voila! Alright, so now we have it assembled. There it is. Everything's nice and tight. If you have some extra room on the sides, go ahead and use some extra spacers. Kind of get it nice and snug. But basically, the idea behind this is now that we have our filament spool, we can just take whatever color we want to use, feed it through our little hole right here. Oh, this one's a little messed up. Showing a little resistance. It's not too tough. Okay. Got the first color through. This allows us to store our filament while placing an X to the printer and being able to feed the color of your choice without ever exposing it to normal air. Very easy to take out, you just pop out the sides, comes up as one piece. Oh, and one last thing, this is the Leisha Gel Packets. Every time you buy filament, most likely it's going to come with a packet. What I've been doing is just taking them, throwing them in the bottom, and distributing them through the rest of my containers over there. You know, they do a pretty good job at absorbing the moisture. You can even buy the ones that have uh, little markings on them that actually change colors when you absorb more moisture from the packet component. So, that's it. That's the end of this tutorial. This is the storage solution. If you like what I did here, like my videos, subscribe to the channel if you want to. I don't know. That's up to you. I'm hoping you do. Because I'm going to have lots more cool stuff. Um, we're really just getting started over here with the 3D printer stuff. But, uh, hoping to really, really do some interesting videos. So, once again, this is Jim with Chicago Lane Geeks. Peace.